Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Reach and Read. My name is Katie, and I work at the Sacramento Public Library, where books are just the beginning. We're so happy to have you here and to have local yoga instructor Kat Sun with us today. And you'll have to forgive me today. I am fighting a cold, so I don't sound like my usual self, so I do apologize. Um, but I'll keep this intro really brief so we can get to the yoga demonstration. Um, I just wanted to share a few housekeeping things. So we are doing this program in a webinar format. Um, so all participant mics and video have been disabled, but you can feel free to use the Q&A function that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. If you have a question or a comment that you would like to share, please feel free to do it there. Also, if you're having any audio related issues, please exit the program and re-enter. We find that doing that will typically solve that issue. Um, if you need closed captioning at any point during the program, please um, use the live transcript button that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. You'll click that button, wait just a moment, and then you'll see the closed captioning pop up and you can follow along. And I will make sure to put that in the chat as well. Also, this program is being recorded and will be shared to our YouTube channel, which you can find under Sacramento Public Library. We have a whole plethora of <laughs> recorded yoga uh, videos over there that you can go and explore. And then I did want to mention that this session of Reach and Read was based on the book, um, Share Your Stuff, I'll Go First, 10 Questions to Help Take Your Friendships to the Next Level by Laura Tremaine. And we have wrapped up all of the questions that were posed in that book, but I do encourage you to check it out from our library collection and also check out Laura Tremaine's podcast, which is very cool. She has some other kind of discovery, exploratory, uh, self-care uh, discussions that she does over there. So it's a really great listen. And then also, since we are at the end of this session of Reach and Read, I wanted to mention that I'll be sending out an email survey um, very quickly <laughs> after the end of this session. So please feel free to share your thoughts and feedback with us. And I will also share a link to the next session of Reach and Read, which is going to be based on the five elements. And that's going to start in two weeks on April 13th. So I'll put a link so that you can register for that one. Um, so keep an eye out for that email. But that's all I have to say. I'm going to go ahead and th turn things over to Kat. So Kat, take it away and everyone please enjoy. All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Uh, great to be here with you all. And thank you, Katie. Um, so as always, I'm offering this from home. So please excuse any extraneous noises you might hear in my in my surroundings. Uh, just continue to breathe and stay present in your body. Um, and also, as usual, we're going to want to have some yoga props. Uh, so always a yoga mat, uh, a blanket or kind of a, a big beach towel will work. A um, couple of yoga blocks if you have um, a yoga strap or a belt you use around your waist or a dog leash can work anything to help extend your reach and um, and I think oh and then today I thought to honor the sun that's finally peeping through we might do some standing sun salutations so uh, for that you might want to have a chair like I have a folding chair so if you've got any kind of a chair but it doesn't have to be a folding chair just any chair that you have uh, that you know you can hold on to the sides of it and it's going to stay in place uh, you know I think that's wonky or that's going to uh, slide too easily but you can put the front two feet of the chair onto the um, the yoga mat so but I'll instruct that when we get there so uh, it also you know like a piece of furniture can work um, anything that's stable that just kind of helps bring the ground up to you a little bit for your hands okay so that's what we're going to be uh, doing today and as usual let's go ahead and take a moment to really arrive together so let's start on our backs I like to have a folded pillow, a blanket for a pillow under my head. If you're home with a cushion, you can also just use a pillow, a cushion, anything that's comfortable for you. Have your other yoga props within reach. And if you don't want to come to the floor, then you're welcome just to stay seated as we first begin. Um, but otherwise, coming onto your back and just allow your arms to rest to the sides of the body. You can have your legs straight out long. Or if it's too much for your low, low back, you can bend your knees and plant your feet on the floor, in which case you can let your knees sort of knock in towards each other. You might walk the feet out a little bit wider and let the knees knock in towards each other so they can support each other. And then just arrive. 
So as always, taking a moment just to arrive, to land. <laughs> Sorry, there's my dad. Okay, so taking a moment just to arrive and land into uh, your body this morning. And as you arrive into your resting pose here, just notice how your body feels this morning. Notice the muscles along the spine beginning to release their grip um, as you feel your spine supported by the earth. And as you do so, you might feel your nervous system beginning to shift a little. So just tuning in. So I know I say it a lot, but this practice really can become a place where we cultivate our inner listening from having our awareness and attention uh, scattered in the outer world. This is a moment where you can pull that attention and awareness inwards. There's nothing you need to do in this next hour. So except be present here with yourself. So as you focus inwards, begin to just feel the terrain within, noticing how your body feels this morning, noticing the quality of your breath as we begin, noticing anything calling for your attention and your mental, emotional body as well. So just noticing without changing, without manipulating anything. Just coming into this real time, present time awareness. And this morning, as we begin, I thought I'd share a little reading with you. So just continue to breathe as I read. So begin to notice the breath, feel the inhalation as it expands, and feel the exhalation as it moves out. So just riding the wave of your breath. So really stay focused with your breath, even as you hear me beginning to share this little reading. So this reading is called Dreaming the Real by Linda France. I'm laying down, looking at the color of sky falling through trees, dreaming the real, <clears throat> tasting what it feels like to love it. Why did it take me so long to let go? Simply exhale so the day could breathe itself in and open without me standing in the way. How could I forget the grace of my own body, strong as this blue, tender as the white of the wild blossom, warm as midday light? Let me practice a patience bold enough to hold every weather, trusting the elements, the beauty of rain, all its shades of gray. I want whatever's real to be enough. At least it's a place to begin and to master the art of loving it. Feel it love me back under my skin. So, taking a moment now to simply exhale and inhale. And as you continue to stay with your breath, just notice how your breath naturally begins to shift perhaps becomes a little more rhythmic, a little smoother, maybe a little more expansive. As you inhale, can you breathe the breath all the way in to the bottom of your lungs, allow causing the diaphragm to push down and the belly to expand out. As you exhale and that air moves out of the lungs, the diaphragm comes back up and the belly sinks back towards the spine. So again, just really riding, feeling that pulsation of expansion and contraction, the spanda of all creation, that flux, expansion and contraction. And then maybe go ahead and open your mouth a little and wiggle out your jaw, stretch out your face, your tongue. And as you let your mouth come back to close, keep your tongue nice and soft. Let your jaw be heavy, soften the back of the throat, relax the muscles around your eyes, soften the muscles on the forehead, and soften the space between your eyebrows. Breathing, filling up your lungs, all the way down to the bottom of the belly. And as you exhale, emptying all the air out, every last bit of it. Yeah, just a couple more cycles with your nice rhythmic breath. 
Now on the floor here, let's all go ahead and bend our knees. Plant your feet on the floor and walk your feet nice and wide apart. So if you're on a regular with yoga mat, walk your feet about mat width apart. So they're nice and wide apart. And then we're opening our arms out wide into the T, palms up. Let's take an inhale in neutral and exhaling, we're gonna spin our head to the right. Keep your head spinning to the right as you keep your left shoulder, left arm heavy. Back of the left hand is on the floor and reach your left hand away from you as you keep spinning your head to the right. So head and, right, uh, head and left hand are moving away from each other. And even though there's no more motion, still stay in the active, uh, in the action of this. Breathe, breathe into the length of that left arm. Breathe into the left chest, left arm, left palm. With your next inhale, bring your head to neutral. And exhale, spin your head now to the left as you reach your right hand away from you. Again, keep the back of the hand, back of the arm on the floor. As you keep spinning your head left, keep reaching your right hand away. And here again, imagine breathing into your right chest. Maybe you feel the stretch down the length of the arm. Maybe you feel it in the palm of the hand. And just taking another breath here. Keep spinning your head left. Keep reaching the right hand to the right. One more breath in and out. And then as we inhale, we bring it to neutral. So as always, this is a standard opening for me. So let's take the arms up towards the sky. We're gonna bend the elbows and clasp the opposite elbows. Take an inhale here. And now go ahead, turn your head to the right, take your elbows to the left. And again, just pause and breathe. Keep spinning your head right, keep sliding your elbows left. Breathe into this, where do you feel it? Wherever you feel the pose, just bring your awareness there as you breathe. Inhale, we bring it back through center. And exhale, let's slide it the other way. Head to the left, elbows slide right. And again, pause and breathe here. Does one side feel different from the other? And inhale, we bring it to neutral again. Let's go ahead, add the legs now. So inhale in neutral, exhale. Head and knees are gonna rock to the right. So head and knees in the same direction, elbows slide in the opposite direction. Inhale through center. And exhaling other direction, head and knees to the left, elbows slide right. So like that. With your own breath now, inhaling through neutral, exhaling, sliding to one side, inhaling center, exhaling other direction. So again, head and knees are in the same direction, elbows opposite direction. Let's just take a few more cycles like this, nice and easy. Make sure you're still breathing. Good, and then the next time you inhale to neutral, let's go ahead and release. Open your arms out wide again, palms up. This time, exhale, head to the right, knees to the left. So now head and knees in opposite direction. Inhale through center, and exhale other direction. If you wanna add the arms, the next time your head spins to the right, your knees to the left, go ahead, the right hand you're looking at, spin, so press the thumbnail into the earth and spin the pinky side of the hand up to the sky. You can keep spinning in that direction to bring the palm towards the floor with the pinky pointing towards the top of the mat. A hand behind you, your left hand, it turns in the opposite direction. So you're going to roll onto the pinky side of the hand so the thumb points up to the sky. Keep spinning in that direction so the palm comes towards the floor and the thumb points down towards the bottom of the mat. And then inhale to neutral and exhaling other direction. Head to the left, knees to the right. Now this time it's the left hand that you press into the thumbnail to take the pinky side of the hand up and maybe planting the palm down as the pinky side of the hand rolls towards the top of the mat. The right hand behind you, you're gonna spin over the pinky side of the hand so the thumb points up and then you can keep spinning in that direction so that the palm comes to the floor and the thumb points down. So oscillating now with your breath, ebb and flowing. If it's too much to add the twisting of the arms, don't worry about it. Just breathe, keep it easy, keep the nervous system soft, keep your breath nice and expansive. And then next time we inhale, let's bring it to neutral. From here, we're gonna hug our knees into our chest and just rock a little side to side. Breathing into those outer hips, low back. 
And as always, we're gonna hug the knees together. So use your hands on the outside of each knee and hug your knees together. If the knees don't come together, you might find it helpful to hug something, either a little cushion or you've got a yoga block, you can hug a block between your knees. And then that way you can press the, the knees in onto something. If you don't need that, you don't need to use it. Inner knees hugging and let's circle the knees together as one big knee in the air. And now notice how does your low back and your sacral area feel? So again, the sacrum is this triangle bone right above our butt crease at the base of the spine in the back body. So oftentimes there's some tenderness or some tightness or soreness around this area. So it's kind of like giving yourself a little gentle massage around your sacral region. So if there's a spot that's extra tender, you might want to pause there and breathe into it. And everybody, let's just slow down the circling by like 5%. So that rather than thinking about circling, you're really focused on feeling that low back sacral area. Whenever you're ready, you can begin to switch the direction of the circling. So again, really tuning in to what's here today in the body. Breathing into what you find. Wherever the sensations present themselves, bring your awareness there. That's your body's way of talking to you, communicating with you. The body is so much wisdom, and it's always communicating with us. So here we really train this process of listening inwards. Starting to tune into the inner guidance, the inner wisdom. Okay, next time your knees come to your chest, let's go ahead again, hug the man and rock a little side to side. Now we're going to split the knees apart and knees to the armpits, rock side to side. You can just keep it like this. If this is plenty, you're just gonna keep hugging your knees to the armpits. For those who are able, you can come into happy baby, soles of the feet up to the sky, shins perpendicular to the floor. And then we clasp behind the thighs, behind the knees, outer shins, outer ankles, or outer edges of the feet. So I always say it really doesn't matter where you're clasping, but you wanna make sure your shoulders are staying on the floor, the back of the neck is nice and long, back of the skull's on the floor, and the forehead and chin are still at about the same level. You wanna avoid reaching too high, but then your chin's jutting above your forehead, and then you've got this kind of crunching in the back of the neck, and this is sending a, a message to the nervous system that you're in fight or flight. So you wanna make sure shoulders are resting, back of the neck's nice and long, forehead is at the same level or slightly higher than the chin as you gently rock a little side to side here. And then let's go ahead, keep the right foot and release the left foot onto the floor with the left knee bent. Here, if you're in happy baby, you might find you're able to bring the knee a little closer in towards the floor. And just take another breath here. And then we're gonna take the right ankle, cross it past the left knee. Here, let's start to flex that right foot. So gently flex the foot, spread the sole of the foot, spread the toes. And think about pressing your inner right heel out towards the left. As you press the inner heel and ball of the big toe out, hug your outer edge of your foot up towards the outer shin. So these are just actions. There may not be movements, right? And then, we're gonna bring our hands onto our thighs, get your heel of the palms right into the hip crease where the thigh and the torso meet. And then gently press your hands into the thighs as you press your low back into the floor. Breathe here. From here, we're gonna take the right hand, right foot's lifted, so it's the right hand that, that goes into the hole between the leg. And then you lift the left foot and you clasp behind the left thigh or if you don't easily reach, you can use a strap or anything, you know, maybe you've got that, that necktie or a belt, whatever it is, use that to slide around the back of that left thigh and you can hold either side of it to help that left knee in towards you. Just breathe here into that outer right hip. Keep your right foot flexed. Keep pressing out through the inner right heel, ball of the big toe, and hug the outer edge of that right foot up towards the outer shin. Now that left foot that's in the air, let's circle that left ankle in the air. Ooh, some good cracks and pops. <laughs> okay, and then circle that left foot in the other direction. All right. And then point and flex that left foot a few times. Good, and we're gonna release the left foot onto the floor. 
From here, we're going to take our strap and slide it onto the sole of the right foot. So again, using a belt, a dog leash, or a necktie works, anything to help extend your reach. And then if your right hamstrings are a little grumpy this morning, you might like to bend and straighten that leg up and down a few times. Ease your way into the hamstring stretch. Mm -hmm. Every time you send the foot up, really think about pressing up through the heel to lengthen the back line of the leg. And if you feel ready, you can keep the foot lifted, stacked right over the hip. If that's too much, then keep bending and straightening until you're ready to keep the foot up. <clears throat> now, once you keep your foot up, slide the strap towards the bottom of the arch, top of the heel. So as your hands are on the strap, your hands, your arms are relaxed, shoulder blades are grounded on the floor, and you just let the weight of the hands holding the strap help ground the thigh bone into the hip socket here. And just breathe here. Here, with your right foot lifted, with your right leg straight, can you flex the right foot? Spread the sole of the foot, spread the toes broad. And again, think about pressing up through the inner heel ball of the big toe. And then this outer edge of the foot, like you wanna slide the outer edge of the foot back down, hug it towards the outer shin. You can keep it just like this, or for those who like, you can straighten your left leg long by pressing your left heel away from you along the floor. If the left leg is long, then again, you're flexing the foot. If your left leg is long, lift your head for a moment and look down the length of the leg. Make sure it's in line with the hip. A lot of times the leg's way out to the side. So if that's happening for you, bring it in line with the hip. Point all five toes up towards the sky. Let the knee roll up towards the sky. And then think about the top of that left quad rolling down to the inseam of the leg. So inner spiral. Use your left hand on your left thigh or left hip bone to keep your left side grounded. You're holding both sides of the strap in the right hand now. And when you're ready, we're going to open our right leg out to the right. So take it only as far as you can while keeping your left hip grounded. So sometimes people come all the way to the right and then that left hip's like popping off the floor. If that's happening for you, you're gonna bring it back up, stay grounded on that left side and only open your right leg out to as much as you can without the, the left side coming off the floor. So that might be up here or you might be able to get all the way down. Either way, can you bring your right elbow to rest on the floor? So take as much strap as you need so you're not powering through the shoulders and the arm. And then again, once your right leg is out to the right, you're gonna press out through the inner heel and ball of the big toe. For those who have blocks, you can always have a block to the right side to support you underneath that leg. I'm sorry, I should have instructed that sooner. And just take a few rounds of breath here. So here, think about breath. Uh, lengthening through the inseam of both legs, especially the right one out to the right. And then we're gonna bring it up. We're switching hands, left hand holds both sides of that strap. Take your right hand now, slide the heel of the palm into the hip crease. And really pressing that hip crease away from you. So pressing your thigh bone away from you towards the bottom of the mat. You slowly start to let your left, your right foot cross the midline towards the left. And nice and slow, so go really slow here. So only like move an inch or so, and then stop and breathe, see what's here. And then, and then scoot it over another inch or so, and pause and breathe. So slowly, slowly, we're taking the right foot cross to the left, keep pressing your thigh bone gently away from you, and breathe into this outer IT band on the right side. And we bring the whole thing up. From here, let's take both sides of the strap back in the right hand. Now you're gonna keep the sole of the right foot pointing up to the sky, keep your left hand on the hip, keep it grounded. We're gonna start to bend the right knee towards the armpit. So everybody's working towards half happy baby. Now if half happy baby is challenging for you, then I suggest you bend your left knee and plant the left foot back on the floor. This will help the pose be more accessible. So again, you might just be working with some little micro bends, trying to keep the sole of the foot pointing up, shim perpendicular to the floor as you bring the knee in. Or for some, you can maybe get that knee all the way down towards the floor. It doesn't matter, you're walking your edge. So just breathe into whatever expression is appropriate in your body this morning. And every day is different, so breathe. From here, we take the foot out of the strap. We're gonna plant the right foot on top of the left thigh. Open your right arm out to the right, palm up, left hand to the outside of the right knee, inhaling, 
And as you exhale, you're gonna twist to the left. So take your right knee, cross the midline towards the left. This time, the right hip will come off the floor as you roll towards your outer left hip. But do your best to keep your right shoulder, right arm still grounded on the floor. And then think about arching your low back gently in towards the spine as you take your knee to the left. Can you spin your belly button towards the right? So there's a counter rotation happening. And then breathe here. Let's go ahead, bring your gaze up to neutral and come back onto your back, interlace your fingers and let's hug the right knee into our chest. And from here, straighten that leg as you press the palms up overhead. Take a nice full body stretch, pressing out through the heels of both feet as you press your palms up towards the top of the mat. And then exhale and bring your arms down by the sides. Whoa. And then when you at a time, feet on the floor. Okay. And from here. Let's go ahead, hug our knees in, rock a little side to side. Split the knees into your armpits and rock a little side to side. Possibly come into happy baby if that's available and rock a little side to side. Keeping your left foot as it is, bring your right foot onto the floor, right knee bent. And just take a moment here in this half happy baby position. Now we're going to take that left ankle and cross it past the right knee. So this time you're flexing through the left foot. So really lengthen out through the inner heel and the ball of the big toe, hugging the outer edge of that left foot in towards the shin. Take your hands, slide them into the hip crease and press the thigh bones away from you as you bring your low back into the floor, breathing here for a beat. Next step, it's the left foot that's lifted, so it's the same hand. Left hand that goes into the hole between the legs. You're gonna lift the right foot off the floor and use your hands or your strap to clasp behind that right thigh. Then just start to bring that right knee in towards you. Keep your left foot flexed. Keep sending the left knee away from you. And now that right foot that's in the air, you can circle that ankle. And circle it the other way. And then let's point and flex. Good. And then we're going to bring that foot back down onto the floor. From here, we're taking our strap again. And let's slide the strap onto the sole of the left foot. Slide it down towards the bottom of the arch, top of the heel. And then again, just bend and straighten that leg up and down a few times. Tune into the hamstring on the left side. How's the hamstring on this side this morning? So again, often to keep moving it up and down as you need, or when you feel ready, you can keep the foot lifted, stack it right over that hip, and start to broaden through the sole of the foot, spread the toes broad, pressing up through the inner heel, ball of the big toe, peeling the, the outer edge of the foot back down towards the outer hip, and breathe here. Option to straighten your right leg long by pressing your right heel away from you on the floor. If the leg is coming into the long position, then again, flex that foot as well. Spread the sole of the foot, spread the toes. And lift your head up for a moment. Make sure it's in line with the hip. So not way out to the side. So get it in. So when you look down, it's on the same line as your hip. The knees and toes are pointing straight up. And you can use your right hand here to put it on the top of the thigh and roll the top of the thigh towards the inner thigh. But just give yourself a little cueing of that slight inner spiral action. Keeping the right hand on the thigh or the hip here, you're holding both sides of the strap in the left hand. And again, if you want to use a block or something to catch you when you open your leg out to the side, or maybe you've got a piece of furniture, when you're ready, let's inhale, keep it grounded on the right. Don't let the right side pop off the floor. You're going to inhale your left leg out to the left. And breathing here. So again, Take as much strap as you need so your left shoulder can stay rested and your left elbow can ground onto the floor. The legs are active, the feet are active. Keep lengthening through the inner heel, ball of the big toe, and hugging the outer edge of the foot back up towards you. Breathe here. Lengthening. Think about lengthening from the inner knee into the inner heel. 
and bring the whole thing back up. We're gonna switch hands. So now right hand holds both sides of the strap. Left hand, get that heel of the palm into your hip crease. So slide it way down in there until there's no more uh, room to go any further and then gently press the thigh bone away from you. And then keep that slight pressure as you start to let your left foot cross the midline, stack it over the right hip to start. And then little by little, so really slow, nice and slow. Start to let the left foot come towards the right a little bit at a time, stopping to feel and breathe. Little by little. And then we'll bring the whole thing back up. And from here, we're going to come into half happy baby again. So holding both sides of the strap in that hand. Let's go ahead and see if we can bend the knee towards the armpit while keeping the sole of the foot facing the sky. Shin stays perpendicular to the floor. So again, if this is not really accessible for you, then definitely bend the right knee. Plant the right foot on the floor. That will help make the pose a little more accessible. Yeah, if you're still working to kind of find that and bend the knee. But if that's really accessible already, then keep the legs straight and just work on getting that knee towards the armpit. Like a supine lunge here. From here, we take the foot out of the strap. Let's plant that foot on the opposite thigh. Open your left arm out to the left palm up. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee, inhaling here. And it's as you, as you exhale, let's go ahead and take that left knee cross to the right. So now we're rolling to the outer right hip. The left hip will come off the floor as you roll to the right. And again, keep your left shoulder, left arm heavy though behind you. Keep them grounded. Arch your low back in towards the spine. Breathe here. Notice how it feels to breathe in the twist. It can be a little more, there's a little more resistance when we're in a twist. So just breathe into that. Let's take a nice breath in through the nose. Sigh it out through the mouth. And then we're gonna unwind as we come back onto our back. Interlace your fingers, other thumb on top, and hug that left knee in towards your chest. And then again, let's take a nice big full body stretch. All right, and sweep your arms in by the sides. Just take a moment here, allow yourself to feel the effects of that. So let the feet just kind of roll away from each other, arms resting by the side body. Just taking a moment, breathe and feel. Let the energy move through. Okay, and then we're gonna start to roll over to one side in order to come on up. So uh, let's just do a little bit of wrist stretching and then we'll do some cat-cow and then we'll come into some sun salutations. All right, so find a seat. Maybe you wanna sit up on a folded blanket or maybe you've got some cushions or maybe you've got a chair you wanna sit on. So sitting on something that's comfortable. Something that allows you to really come towards the front edge of your sit bone. So something nice and firm, uh, not, too, not too soft. And then rock towards the front edge. So I'm sitting on the edge of a blanket. So I'm bringing my sit bones towards the front edge of the, the support. Because sometimes if you sit too far back, then you tend to like hunch and round. So come towards the front edge of it. And then as you come to the front edge of it, rock towards the front edge of your sit bones, those bones you're seated on. Come towards the front edge of that. As you come towards the front edge, you feel naturally your low back kind of comes in. And then let's make some big shoulder circles. So circling your shoulders forward, then up, then back, and down. So in that direction, forward, up, back, and down. A couple more nice shoulder circles. Just noticing the movement through the shoulders this morning. The next time your shoulders go back and down, keep your shoulder blades moving back and down. Keep your shoulder blades sliding down the back body. And then imagine your buttock flush also sliding down the back body. That tailbone is grounding down into the center of the earth. And then in the front body, imagine your navel gently hugging back towards the spine, spreading as it moves into the back body and lifting slightly. The collarbones broaden, the heart is buoyant. And into all of that now, breathe into this mid-back area, the kidney band area. 
And imagine from the spine broadening out. The front floating ribs, don't let them poke forward. So keep them soft. Let the front floating ribs soften down. Broaden into the kidney band. Shoulder blades down the back. And then grinding down through the sit bones, lengthen up through the back of the neck, through the crown of the head. Chin gently, ever so slightly lowers a little bit. And breathe here. And again, soften your mouth, relax your tongue. Tip of the tongue can touch the top of the palate. Take a beat, close your eyes here, and breathe. Feel yourself now, feel yourself rooted into earth and reaching up into sky. Breathing into this. Feel your spine stacked nice and tall in alignment. Good, and then let's blink open the eyes. We're gonna inhale, sweep our arms out and up. And next, I'll bring our hands down. Do it again. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. And as you exhale, palms together, slide it down. One more time. Inhale, reach, gather, bring it down through you. This time, pause in front of your heart. Palms together in front of the heart. Press the thumbs gently against the sternum here. Shoulder blades down the back. And take a beat this morning and connect in with your heart center. Connect in with your inner wisdom, your inner guidance. And maybe you just take a moment to tune into that inner still point. Good. Let's bow the head to the heart. Again, sweep our arms out and up as we inhale. This time, let's keep the right hand lifted. Bring your left fingertips down. Walk your left fingertips away. We're going to bend the right elbow and gently tilt our head to the left, or to the right, I'm sorry. So head to the right, fingertip, left fingertips walk away. Breathe into the left side of your neck, down into the length of the arm, into the fingertips, into the floor. And then just take your top right hand and bring it to the right side of your face and use your hand to help your head. Let's take a big shoulder circle. Again, inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Keep the left hand lifted, right fingertips down. Walk your right fingertips away. And let's bend the left elbow and bring that left hand to the right side of your head as you gently tilt your head down to the right. Walk your right fingertips away. Breathe into that line. And then taking that left hand, bring it to the left side of your face and help your head up. And again, big shoulder circle. Let's go ahead and just change the crossing of our legs, other leg in front or on top. Let's make some fists with our hands now, and we're going to circle out our wrists. And we're going to circle them the other way. Good. And then we're going to shake out our hands. Like you got to shake off all the water. Get all the water off your hands. So really shake them out vigorously. Keep that shaking action, but turn your palms up as you shake them out. Good. And then shake out your elbows. And shoulders up and down. And then wag your head, wag your tail. All right. From here, let's interlace the fingers and we're just going to figure eight the wrists. So sometimes I see people doing this with the elbows. So try to keep the elbows quiet and you're just moving at the wrists. So figure eight. Good. And then just reverse that figure eight other direction. And then let's pause. Now change it so the other thumb is crossed on top. So reverse cross. And again, figure eight. Make sure you're still breathing. And reverse that figure eight. Good. And then again, shake it out. All right. Make big palms with your hands. Keep your right hand nice and broad. Use your left hand to get all five fingers, including the thumb, if you can. And just gently bring those finger back towards you as you bring your elbows towards straight without locking it. And stretching out the underbelly of that right wrist and forearm. And breathe into what you find. And then you can let the hand, release the hand, let the fingers point down. And now use your left hand to press against the back of the knuckles. Uh, back of the hand there and stretching out the top of the forearm, top of the wrist. 
and just shake it out. Second side, again, big palms. Keep your left hand nice and broad. Use your right hand now to get all five of the fingers, including the thumb, and gently bring them back towards you. So as best you can, let the left elbow come towards straight without locking the elbow. And then release that, let the fingers point down. And now using your right hand, press against the back of the hand towards you, stretching out the top of the wrist and forearm. Good, and then shake it out. Okay, shoulders up and down, wag your head, wag your tail. All right, with that, let's go ahead and um, just do a few cat cows and then we'll come to standing. So we're gonna be on our hands and knees. You, if you have sensitive knees, you might wanna have extra padding. So sometimes people use those garden pads. You can open up your blanket or you know your beach towel, whatever it is you're using. Um, if this is not appropriate to be hands and knees, you can do seated cat cows or you're just seated on a chair. Like imagine my butt's on the chair, my hands are on my thighs, and then you just come forward and back like this on the chair. Or you can do this standing too on the on your feet, okay? But if you're able to be on hands and knees, let's come on to hands and knees. So on hands and knees, now take a moment to find the ball of your index finger and always grounding down through the ball of the index finger, then the thumb mound. From those two inner points grounded, spread the rest of the palm and then ground the rest of the hand. Stacking the shoulders over the wrist. If this is still not appropriate for your wrist, then you can make fists and put the knuckles down onto the floor instead, okay? And hips are stacked over the knees, shoulders are stacked over our wrists. Let's go ahead, broaden those sit bones and lift the sit bones. As you inhale, the belly hammocks down, but keep your navel hugging up towards the spine. Heart forward, chin up. Exhaling, reverse, tailbone down, inflate your kidneys up, chin towards the chest, crown of the head towards the floor. So cycling through a few times through your cat cow. You might close your eyes and just enjoy the movement. So again, if you don't want to be on hands and knees, you can be seated in the chair. I'll demo that too for those who uh, need the demo. So in which case, here's a chair and you can sit on the chair, feet planted underneath the knees, hands onto the thighs. And then you just rock forward, bring your heart forward, look up, shoulder blades towards each other, exhaling round back. So still getting the undulation through your spine, or you can just do the simply standing. These are slightly bent as you cat cow here, okay? So just a few more cycles, whichever variation you're using. All right. And then if you're on hands and knees, let's go ahead and we're all gonna come on up to standing. So let's come to standing. And now we're gonna do um, some sun salutations I'm gonna demo it with the chair, but I know maybe not everybody has a, a chair. So again, it can be, like I have a, a yoga chair here, but it could just be any regular chair you have at your dining table, like this will work. Now, maybe I'll just demo with a chair so people don't feel like they have to have a special yoga chair. But you do wanna make sure the front two feet of your chair at least are on your yoga mat so it doesn't slide. Okay, you can also prop the chair up against the wall so it doesn't move. And then you, you got your yoga mat here and the yoga mat's like this direction, right? So that works too. So here, we're gonna just stand in front of our chair. So you wanna make sure the chair is something stable. It's not gonna like wobble and break or, you know, slip. You wanna make sure it's steady and stable. Okay, so uh, we're gonna stand in front of our chair. We're gonna find Tadas in the mountain pose. So I'll turn towards you for that. So you can have your feet just hip width apart. Or if it's comfortable for you to have your big toes together, your heels slightly apart, that's another option. Try to avoid the feet too wide here. So just get them stacked right underneath your hips or big toes together, heels slightly apart. And then take a moment and look at your feet and just make sure that they're even. So, so uh, get the big toes lined up. If you draw lines from the center uh, of the foot, you know the lines are parallel. Okay. And then let's find our feet. So take a moment to feel your feet ground into the ball of the big toes, inner heel, and lift the inner arches, inner ankles, roll your inner thighs back, lengthen your tailbone long. Shrug your shoulders forward, up, back, and down, lengthening the tailbone down as you reach the crown of the head up, nice and tall in your mountain pose. 
Feel yourself fully rooted into the earth and lifting up into the sky. Okay, from there, let's go ahead, inhale. We're sweeping our arms out and up, so stay rooted through your feet as you reach up. And then exhaling, let's just swan dive. Hinge from your hip crease. You can bend your knees if you need. If you're not using a chair, you can bring your hands onto your thighs. If you got a chair, you can bring your hands onto the chair. Lift the heart now, so knees can stay bent. Lift your heart, length of the front body. Inhale, shoulder blades move away from the ears. And then exhaling, we're gonna forward fold. If you've got a chair, you can maybe bring your forehead to the chair or you can have a block on the chair. So you can ground your forehead down. Again, we're gonna come up and down a few times at that. So again, inhale, ground down through the feet. Lift the front of the spine, shoulder blades away from the ears, lengthen the front line. Exhaling, hinge from your hip crease to fold. One more time, halfway lift, inhale. Exhaling, fold. Good, this time inhale, lift it up halfway. We're gonna hold on, you can either hold the sides of the chair with your hands or you can plant your palms onto the chair seat, in which case ground the ball of the index finger and thumb mound again. And then we're gonna step our feet one at a time away from the chair. So we come into a bit of an angle. So toes are curled under and here, See if you can get your torso and your thighs in one line. So it's plank pose, yeah? And we're on the chair so that we're a little bit higher rather than down on the floor. Now here, holding plank, can you think about sliding your inner thighs up towards the ceiling, hug your navel up towards your spine, hug your sternum up into your shoulder blades, but lengthen your tailbone down towards the floor. So keep that, take another breath here, feel the power here, feel the core engaged, shoulders stacked over the wrists, and then we're gonna shrug our shoulders up towards the ears and then bring our shoulders back as we bring our heart through between the arms. That's the action that allows the hips to start to dip towards the chair. Keep your tailbone long, don't crunch your low back. So gliding your heart through, this is the inhale. And then now from your navel, we're gonna take it straight back into downward dog. So pressing the hips back now, let your arms be long, let the head come between the arms. Heels come towards the floor. Downward dog. And then again, let's slide it forward, coming into plank pose. So bring your hips forward, stack your shoulders over your wrists, on your tippy toes. Let the line be nice and long from torso through thigh. Hover here. So again, everything hugging up, except lengthening that tailbone down. Feel the power here. Feel how the core has to engage. You're still breathing. <laughs> Face is soft, maybe a smile on your mouth. Okay, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears and then take your shoulders back and that's the action that brings the heart through. Let your tailbone lengthen. Hips come towards the chair. Nice long low back, even in your upward dog. And then from your navel, take it back again, downward dog. Get ready for that. Let's just do one more. So bring it through, coming into plank. Again, find that nice long line, hug everything up, inner thighs rolling up, navel hugging up, sternum hugging up, and then tailbone long towards the floor. Keep that tailbone long, shrug your shoulders, bring your heart through between your arms as your hips dip towards the chair. Nice long line behind the neck. So try to avoid that. Sometimes people wanna look up and then they crunch so keep the back of the neck long. Still telescoping the back of the skull up. And then press it back, downward dog. So hips slide back, arms nice and long. Let your head come between your arms. And now think about grounding the, um, rolling your forearms in. So if you got your hands on the chair, think about pressing down through the ball of the index finger and thumb. And then the upper arms, the triceps, but the biceps are rolling away from your ears as the underbelly of the upper arm triceps are rolling in towards you. So again, you got counter rotation happening in the arms. I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> Just take what works. Okay, taking one more breath here. With our next inhale, let's bend our knees, look up between the hands, and then we're gonna step to the top here, stepping up to the chair. Once you get to your chair, inhale, lift your heart up halfway, and then exhaling, folding. Press into your feet, bend your knees as you need. We're pressing down to come all the way up. Inhaling, rising, greeting the sun. 
Exhale, bring your hands down to your heart. Let's do that again. You guys ready? So release your hands. Find your equal standing, Tadasana. Samastitihi, equal standing or mountain pose, Tadasana. So finding your pose, really root down through the feet, get grounded, always making sure you're really set in your foundation before adding on. So grounding down through the four corners of the feet, lifting those inner arches, roll the inner thighs back, shrug your shoulder blades down on the back body, reach the back of the neck, back of the skull up. With our next inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Greet the day. And then exhaling, swan dive, hinge from your hips, bend the knees if you need. Bring your hands onto the chair if you're using it. Halfway lift as we inhale. Fold as we exhale. This time, halfway lift, inhale, step your feet back. Come into your plank pose. Find that line, get that power. Hug everything up, tailbone down. When you're ready, shrug the shoulders, bring the heart through, upward dog, inhaling, tailbone long. From your navel, take it back, exhaling, downward dog with the chair. And this time in downward dog, bend your knees, broaden the sit bones, lift those sit bones up and away from each other. Keep them lifted and broad and then Keep them lifted and broad as you press your thigh bones back into the hamstring to straighten the legs, letting the heels come towards the floor. And then hug your navel up. So I kind of have a tendency to kind of, you can see I sway back here. So if this is happening for you, hug everything up. So keep the integrity through the spine here. And then let's bend the knees, look up between the chair, between the hands at the chair, and step back up to the top. Halfway lift when you get there, inhaling, holding as you exhale. Grabbing into the feet, bend the knees if you need. Inhale, pressing down to rise. Palms touch at the top. Exhale, hands to the heart. Let's see. All right. And let's do just one more time. Just one breath per movement, and then we'll take it down for Shavasana. So release your hands, grounding down. Inhale, rising up. Exhaling, swan dive. Halfway lift as we inhale. Fold as we exhale. Halfway lift, plant your hands, step your feet back, come into your plank pose. Find the integrity of the pose here. Shrug the shoulder blades, tailbone long. When you're ready, inhale, bring the heart through. Let the hips come towards the floor. Keep the tailbone long, keep that low back long, back of the neck long. Exhale, take it back. Downward dog. Take a beat in down dog. Let's take a nice breath here. Shake it out. Okay. And then we're going to bend the knees. Look up between the hands. And step your feet up towards the top. Lift that heart up. Halfway lift on the inhale. Fold again on the exhale. Root into the feet. Pressing down to rise. All the way up. And exhale. Hands to the and take a moment as you arrive. Feel that energy now as it moves through. Good. And then release your hands. All right, we're going to have to bring it down onto the floor as we come to um, our resting pose. So uh, if you have something to cover your eyes with, I highly recommend having something to cover your eyes. It's nice to have a pillow underneath your head. Make sure you're warm enough, so maybe since you're probably home, maybe you got some blankies or put on another layer, put on some socks. We won't be here that long, but you're always welcome to stay longer in Shavasana. Um, you know, we're on the time limit here, but if you're home and you can rest for a little bit longer in Shavasana, I highly recommend it. We don't tend to get enough rest in our culture. Um, so make sure you're comfortable. Like if you've got something to prop underneath your knees, like here I've got two yoga blocks I could use underneath the knees to help release the low back. In which case, I actually bring it towards the top of the knee, bottom, uh, so it's really underneath my, my uh, lower thighs. And then hands can rest on the body or you can have your arms out to the sides. As you arrive into Shavasana, allow yourself again to settle in and take a nice deep breath in. A nice big breath out. 
You're gonna do it again, inhaling through your nose. This time, make some noise. We're gonna ha. Ah. It's the sound of the heart. So again, inhale through your nose. Ah. One more time. Inhale and enjoy that vibration as you ah. And then keeping your tongue soft as you let your Mouth closed, keep your teeth and lips slightly parted. Let the tongue to be short and broad, back of the throat soft, relax around the eyes, forehead. And then dropping all doing, releasing any breath control. Allow the eyeballs to begin to softly move towards the back of the skull to bring your inner gaze to rest into the heart center. Dreaming the Real by Linda France. I'm lying down, looking at the color of sky, falling through trees, dreaming the real, tasting what it feels like to love it. Why did it take me so long to let go? Simply exhale. So the day could breathe itself in and open without me standing in the way. How could I forget the grace of my own body, strong as this blue, tender as the white of the wild blossom, warm as midday light? Let me practice the patience bold enough to hold every weather, trusting the elements, the beauty of rain, all its shades of gray. I want whatever's real to be enough. At least it's a place to begin and to master the art of loving it. Feel it love me back under my skin. Dreaming the real. So feel free to stay in Shavasana as long as you like. I'm gonna go ahead and turn things back over to Katie. Thank you all for joining us. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kat, for another wonderful session. That was really great. And thank you for that reading. That was a nice addition. And thank you, everybody, so much for joining us for Reach and Read. We were so excited to have you for this program. And we will be returning on April 13th with a new session based on the five elements. So keep an eye out for that email that I'm going to be sending shortly. It'll have a link to registration for that if you would like to join us again. So in the meantime, to find a library location near you, sign up for a library card, or to learn about upcoming programs for all ages, just go to www.saclibrary.org. So for Kat, myself, and the Sacramento Public Library, thank you so much and be well.